Well, guys, welcome back. It's been too long, too long. I actually don't know how long it's been, but we are back. The news desk, Lionel and myself. Ironically, I'm doing the intro by myself, but welcome. And content galore. Two months, maybe three months worth of news. So we will see you in there. Mini Matters, a miniature painting podcast. But um, Lionel. <laughs> New camera, new content. Yeah. yeah, I'll go on about all that at the end after we've done the news of this time. <laughs> well, no one will ever know the effort that we just put in to get here. <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, it's it's long past the five hours mark where we spent setting up. Um, and admittedly, we didn't just, you know, faff around with the filters and everything. But, fun, you know, I guess in theory, no one cares. We're here now. And boy, do we have a lot of news for you today. We do yeah. have a lot of news, though. We, we've got just like a shitload of news. Is that news from the last like week, or is that news that's built up over the last like? Um, it, it, it's a collection. So obviously, we've had some time off, or I've had some time off uh, from Mini Matters. It's probably coming up to about six weeks now, although it doesn't feel like it. But in that time. There's obviously been a lot going on in the in the miniature world. So what I've done is I've tried to keep some up to date stuff, but also I've gone back to some older pieces of news that I still think is worth mentioning because uh, it's of interest. Um, and the show would have been a lot longer if I had included everything I wanted to do. It's ironic that when I do take some time off, the miniature world seemed to have exploded. There were some big kick kickstarters, big releases, uh, but I think Jamie's covered them as well in his independent show. <clears throat> So they haven't been missed Less, out completely. Um, but yeah, but I, I, I've read some old, what, what some might consider old news because I still wanted us to, to have a discussion about it, Jamie. So yeah, we've got some absolutely, old absolutely. bits and some new bits and a bit of variety, I think, across the board. Tiggly, tiggly bits. Um, yeah, well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm interested to see, you know, what, well, actually I've seen the images, but, you know, I haven't heard all the background, all the juicy uh, bits about, whatever it was that, that you're about to cover. <laughs> uh, so, shall we? Or do, do, do you want to just quickly fill in people? What have you been doing in your time away? Yeah, so I think um, the main thing is, I think the universe was telling me to take some time out. Um, the reason oh, no. being is, yeah, we, we, we've kind of joked about it in previous, in previous casts, but I, I had a lot of... Um, <laughs> unlucky circumstances trying to bring my setup here to up to speed so we've had audio issues which i think everybody has noticed um oh of the course last the last episode that we we, we finished yeah. on a, on an all-time high with the uh well with the audio not working and we still went out with the episode because we didn't even know until after it gone out that you just couldn't hear you and ironically i don't know if i should take this personally but ironically <laughs> Got a lot more views than the, than the previous one where, where you could hear. So I don't know if that's the world saying better to don't see Lionel. Lionel. <laughs> Have you, did yeah. you watch any of it? Because I watched like maybe three or four minutes. Yeah, I, well, I tend to watch all of them back. I watch your content mm. and our content back Thank just you. to see if there's anything we can pick up, anything we can improve upon. Um, and I noticed, oh, there's quite a few comments in here. You know, so it must have been a good check. And all the comments were, why can't I hear Lionel? Why can't I hear your partner? There's no sound here. And I thought, oh. And it was, it was that kind of thing. Do we pull down the episode? Um, or, do we leave, or do we leave it up with a warning? Yeah. Because obviously, we, live, we still we feature We live by our products. mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we still feature products. And obviously, there's links as well. So we thought, because for the companies, we left that episode up. And then it was a bit bizarre that it was like one of our most <laughs> viewed episodes, maybe Con because it was such a car crash. Uh, people wanted to see that. It so, is yeah, pretty so th hilarious, though, because I'm like, I'll give my opinion and then you'll see you talking. And then just by the context of whatever my answer is, do we know roughly what you said? No. Yeah, it, it was. A and ironically enough, at the end of that episode is where I announced I'll be taking some time off, so uh, it's not... back. So as far as people are concerned, news has just disappeared for six weeks, and that was it. <laughs> Luckily, um, I described but... it. But also, funnily enough, the week before, my audio didn't work on sections of it. There's a lot I of know, moving I parts. Think... I, I, Tim. I think. Well, yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, I hate technology. I hate it with a passion. 
but every time we change a variable it seems to throw everything off so the, the last thing i tried to do as well was update my internet because obviously what we found is with streaming although my internet was good enough for mm. uh normal family life it wasn't good enough for this so i tried to then update my internet mm -hmm. with my provider um and that was a nightmare to try and get it done i then tried to flip to another provider who then took advanced payments but then didn't complete the order so i you couldn't make it up at one point i thought it was being punked so then i had to try and claim that money back i then went back to my original provider and upgraded to their super fast fiber optic blade runner internet some guys came around drilled holes into my wall hardwired it in um and it was slower than my old internet um and at which point the guys went it, they hadn't installed it properly, at which point one of the guys went, oh, yeah, we just need to uh, open it up our end. And I said this to you, it's, it's sounded like a yes. <laughs> yeah, I've, got to push a, I've got to push a stronger signal through. I'm pushing yeah. it through now. I was like, are you? <laughs> are you really? It does sound like the most magical bullshit thing ever, doesn't it? Like, so yeah, hold on, like... I'm going to put a super signal down yeah. your stream and the fairies will align yeah. and, uh, wow, you've got fast yeah. internet. But it yeah, did get it better, like right? that, yeah, and then they put the yeah. uh, put the phone in and they all laugh at the customer on the line because he's such a <laughs> yeah, mugs. Uh, it, yeah. it sounds like it's it, I likened it to oh my 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 alarm system on my house isn't working. Oh, don't worry. What we've done is we put an invisible force field around the house yeah. and everything's gonna be all right. And that's four hundred thousand so anyway, pounds, please. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, after a week of that, it finally worked. Um, and I got my speeds up. And then the next part was to upgrade my camera. And I ordered my camera and it was meant to arrive within a week. And then when it was due to arrive. Who did you order from, through? I feel like that's an important part. That's Amazon. Yeah. Um, because I'm a bit late to the Amazon party, but James, Amazon's brilliant, Lionel. You, you know, yeah. life will become a lot easier. So I ordered this camera, <laughs> Ethics, uh, yeah. quite an expensive Canon DSLR, which I'm using now. And on the day it was meant to be delivered, the uh, delivery date suddenly changed to a month. So I tried to cancel the order because I needed it quicker than a month. And instead of cancelling the order, they charged me twice for the camera. So at that point, <laughs> at that point, I went, you know what, Jamie? I'm taking some time off. I think this is the universal way of saying, take some time off um, and then come back when you're refreshed. And I did do that. And it was quite nice actually taking some time off. And if you follow our social media, it would have been quite apparent that I've taken some time off because there's been no posts in about five or six weeks. And that in itself was quite enjoyable, actually, to as much as I love doing this in the miniature world, it was quite nice to unplug and have a complete rest from it because it was starting to become... Yeah, uh, especially all in for, for context as well. Like, I'd, I'd not really pulled my weight, as it were, weight for... You know, we went through different spells. Like, I kicked us off yeah. and put quite a lot in for like three months and then... I think you probably did like nine months maybe of, of pretty much carrying it. So I think it's good that we, uh, and now we're hopefully coming and meeting in the middle where you're doing your content. I'll do my content and we'll do this beautiful show. And it's just going to be a lot more sustainable rather than burning out and hating everybody in the world. Yeah. I think, I think that was the other reason I wanted to take some time off because obviously I'm working on my own solo uh, show as well, which will either be fortnightly or weekly. Um, and I'll give more details about that once it's once I've got the first few episodes recorded. Game will obviously have the Hutba show, which has obviously kept the channel going for the last six or seven weeks while I've been off. And then we will do the news desk, but the news desk will be moving to a fortnightly fixture as as opposed to a weekly one. Uh, because one, that makes it a bit more manageable for us, but also it means then we can cherry pick what we believe is the best news as opposed to maybe just finding Exclusive. content to fill to fill a weekly episode we believe a fortnightly episode means that we can cherry pick the best of the best um and highlight the best releases and best news articles for you so fortnightly will be uh the way forward and then my That's wife exciting. gets me back once a fortnight as well on a friday night which is important my wife doesn't care uh she would rather i wasn't here <laughs> Um, that's that's not true. Jamie, she, she she cares. Jamie will be producing a lot more content every <laughs> yeah, exactly. night. I'll up it. I've got so much content planned in my brain, and it's just like I need to get it down. Um, I was thinking about renaming this show though, 
I don't know what your thought. I, obviously, we haven't spoken about this before, but I was thinking about not calling what, it the news show, desk. Your show? This this show, like, and just calling right. it the uh, the mini the mini hangout. Or I've got I've not thought about this at all, by the way. But I just thought we wanted to do slightly longer shows because it's fortnightly now, um, mm. and we've obviously spent already you know ten minutes in now to the episode, and we've just had a nice casual chat, which I enjoy. Don't get me wrong, yeah. and that's what I'm that's what I'm advocating. News mixed in, because look, news. Oh, shit, wrong one. News. <laughs> uh, I do that. Um, do you know what I mean? Mix it. News, fun, maybe what I'm painting, maybe what you're painting. Just a general yeah. hobby show. But maybe the news desk is more of a an easier thing to sell. Well, it may, well, it, it may be the case that we do something else as well. Then we have the news desk as is, yeah. and then we just record a separate thing at the end. Well, we record yeah. it in one recording, cut it off and release it as a separate release. Yeah, news like a cheeky little 15-minute I've, I've got then... to say, actually, I've got to say, as much as I enjoyed the time out, um, I did miss having a, a catch-up with you um, in oh, that no. sense. So, kind. So in the... <laughs> In, 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 in that sense, um, I think there is mileage in us doing something because I think it's easy for us to record and just have a catch up and just have a general discussion about what we're doing. I suppose the issue is whether the audience or anybody who watches would not be important. interested in Not important. Uploading. All right. Never make content for, for, for the audience, Lionel. That's, that's rule number one. Everyone that's, knows that. Make content for yourself. Ignore yeah. everyone else. Yeah. Ignore feedback. Um, ignore the comments. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and ideally, if possible, offend people, but don't go to prison. I feel like that's that is actually something I genuinely that's something I do enjoy. I, I you know, my sister today. Um, obviously we're <laughs> digressing here, but my sister today goes, "Look, Jamie, I know when you said kill your cats that that is it wasn't the best idea. Um, but you know, maybe you could you could give them up for adoption." And I go, <laughs> I go. Well, you well, said that you said that on your show or you said that no no to my sister because because we've got three cats here but they're really struggling with uh poppy the daughter because she's getting a oh, bit okay. older now they yeah, they're just not particularly happy because there's three and we're in a three bed flat you know um yeah i just think it makes more sense so and this was like five months ago that i said this to my sister and tina in the whatsapp mm -hmm. group and so she said that and then i go well that was obviously a joke and she goes yeah the thing is it wasn't a joke and i go well hang on <laughs> Like, who do you think I am? Why would I kill my cats? I obviously wouldn't kill my cats. Um, but, yeah, and obviously there's my sister who knows me. Um, I go, and then I, I had to sort of take a step back and go, trying to explain what a joke is that I do. Like like that print screen I sent you that Tina said about me, where she goes, I don't know if you're joking, but hopefully yeah. you are. Um, but, this is, but this is the thing, though. I, I still can't read you. Um, well, apparently nor can my family. <laughs> Yeah, but, I, well, the fact that your wife still can't read you is 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 quite worrying. Dumb. But they're all the, dumb. That's are, the problem. There are points in WhatsApp conversations that we have. And there are <laughs> still now, right? The, yeah, and there are points even in the show where I think, "Where's he going with this? Is he is he being real? Is he joking?" Yeah, yeah. And well, I'm thinking, I've got to try and deliver <laughs> this information. Oh no! Hold on. Oh, you're back. What the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, go on. Deliver this information. Yeah. Um, deliver this information and um and I'm also trying to read you. And <laughs> I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to play poker with you, put it that way. Oof. Yeah, I haven't played poker in a while. Um don't play much. But the yeah, well, so and this is this is the uh the thing that I had to explain to my sister. I was like, well, almost everything I say that's extreme like that's obviously and I suppose that's the, the the thing that people need to work out I'm talking about when I'm talking about like if I say something extreme and I say it with a deadpan face I am joking like it's a joke however if you entertain the conversation like the killing of my cats it's not an idea like the idea I put forward is not something that I believe in or want or or have like a strong affinity to it's a controversial idea that I enjoy bringing something that other people, you know, don't want to say or don't think about, and then we can have a real you conversation. Like, of... you like shock you like factor, shock humor, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but 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 I I always thought this right, and I'm learning now from you, from Tina, and from Ashley, my sister, that people don't know that it's a joke. Like, 
saying something so outrageous like I'll shoot the cats because because you know I have guns and stuff so I could shoot the cats so it's based on a small bit of realism however the the reality is I, I wouldn't kill my cats but it still opens up a small medium of conversation I'll say I'll kill my cats they'll go well why would you want to kill them and then I'll go hmm and then we can have a conversation I think I think there's that filter though isn't there where sometimes people think of a joke in their head and think it's funny in my head, but I'm not going to say that out loud. Whereas you don't have that filter. We are if anything. Filter. Yeah, we are your filter. Me. We go back yeah. and go, oh, actually, Jamie, that's that's not what people joke yeah. about. We've only had to bleep it one thing, right? Hmm? Or, or maybe two. I th I th to be honest, I'm on my best behavior in these videos. Uh, as you probably know from <laughs> being in person. Uh, yeah, so... Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> we missed that. We probably missed that. I don't even know what it is. But I know it's an evening thing. So, should we go on to the photos? <laughs> Wait. Yeah, so, I don't know what running order you've got. So, if you throw the first one up and then I'll, I'll try to. Okay. So, this is the one that I referred to, or these two releases are the ones that I referred to, which is slightly old news. So, this came out about two weeks ago. And it's one of the two new releases that came from Aquella Models, which is the company which is done by David Aroba. And this is a 75 mil resin sculpt called Caldas. And it's essentially an, uh, what I would say is an Atlantean or an underwater uh, warrior. And this, is, this was released about three weeks ago and it's available to order now. Um, it's been sculpted by Alejandro Mo. Uh, Monet, who basically did a few of the Marvel United models. So you'll see his work with Big Child yeah. Studio. So he's quite an accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. He's quite an accomplished sculptor and um, he seems to be hitting it out of the park at the moment. And it's based on concept art by a Mike Filet. Um, so we'll put links. Um, I believe I put links in the Instagram post anyway, if you want to see their work up close. And that's available now. Now, that 15% off, which is on that photo, was on the pre-order. I don't think that's available anymore because, obviously, the post is, is so old. But it is obviously available to order now. I think it's a very interesting sculpt. It's quite unique. And no doubt David will be doing the box art at some point. Um, what's your thoughts on this one, Jamie? Well, I was this face was not a sad face. It was a face. Because... Uh, it, it, I've not basically seen any of the releases you sent over. So it goes to show when you're not in my life, I basically don't know what's being released. Uh, and, which is weird. I suppose people who watch the Hubba show can see uh, my th sort of thought process around models. And yeah, it's good. It's good to be back, to be honest with you. Um, what do I think? I think there's a spider on his fucking neck, which is it's creepy. Um, but what well, on his shoulder? Maybe not his neck. I'm assuming it's a spider crab rather than a real venomous spider. However, you know, who knows? Um, but I do think the sculpt's good. Um, I think it's cr it's genuinely creepy that he has, um, like, fins on his legs. Uh, but it goes, you know, it goes with the model. It's also weird that he's got two penis-like chin things, which are obviously tentacles coming off his yeah. chin. Um, but, yeah, I think it's good. It, 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 it's like Martian Man, but completely different. I like his yeah, it yeah. Goes. it's it's totally unique and I in that respect I like it a lot and the sculpt is it's very good. Yeah, um the name of the film escapes me now, but it reminds me of the creature from um I'm trying to um there's that love really story that was yeah, 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 that yeah. Love... with Pan's Lab from director, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, there was a, a yeah, people are screaming. Let's... So Shape... The Shape of Water was the film I was referring to, so yeah, so it's, it's there's similarities there. Yeah. So that's available to order now. So if you want to pick it up um, and do so, I've got to say actually, they're doing a lot of varied releases. Um, bearing doing a lot of they're... releases as well, actually. Like from knowing how hard it is to do a release uh, yeah. and the time it takes. Yeah, genuinely, it's it's impressive. They they must have spent a long time planning this, or just yeah. And I, I know these are all first releases probably in, in long lines, but obviously we've had mm. uh, the Black Moth, which is very different to this. 
Um, there's another release which we'll go into in, in a moment. Um, they've they've had quite a varied. Yeah, the dragon, well, or, or Dino Rider. Yeah, um, so they've had quite a varied catalog. The, um, the Atomic Blast as well. Yeah, yeah, which is which is interesting. In fact, so, let me, um, in... there, go on, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, that was it. So that was the first of the their two releases, and I believe we've got their next one up, which should. Okay. So what we <laughs> just got... called Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so what we've got here is Dave the Barbarian, and this is a sculpt that has been released by them. Uh, and once again, this was announced about three weeks ago, so it's slightly old news, but I wanted I wanted to cover it anyway. And it's been sculpted by Barone Artwork. Now we've covered Barone's work in former episodes he was the uh, individual who likes to put famous individuals on in onto a space marine armor so he did uh miles mackerson the uh, hannibal sculpt which um I don't remember. it's it's the one that um was oh i've gone blank now um uh, but it was the <laughs> <Shall I pause it? laughs> huh? So yeah, um, it was the one that was painted by Fami Alonso and we covered it a few weeks back. So what um, Barone does is he tends to translate very realistic looking faces from people, infamous people that we know, and puts them onto fantasy busts or fantasy settings. So he's done it with space marines, he's done it with fantasy warriors. And obviously what he's done here is he's, um, he's uh, immortalised David Aroba um, as a barbarian. So you would have oh. made the connection. <laughs> Did you not make that connection? So that's I, I thought it was um, uh, David Beckham. No, it's 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 David Aroba. That's him. Yeah. So David Beckham. Put, yeah, David Beckham yeah. yeah, so he's put his face onto a barbarian bust. Um, that is quite funny. And it's going to be interesting because I presume David will then do the box art for it. So he's actually going to be painting, painting himself. himself. Dirty bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so. quite cool. So that that's a bit that's a bit of fun as well. Um, so that's available to order now as well, and that's two releases from them, and they both pretty much came out the same week, I believe. One was announced at the beginning of the week, and the other one was announced towards the end. And like I said, they're about two or three weeks old now, but I think they're quite nice releases, and I just wanted to mention it. Um, any thoughts, Jamie? Yep. Oh, uh, <laughs> I should say them, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh... I mean, it's an easy bust in a way, you know, it's like an, it's just, I suppose it's slightly more than an anatomical, which is quite cool. Uh, and again, it's very impressive that they can get these out that down quickly. Um, mm. As for the model, I think, I think the face is really good. I think for me, I hate that much skin <coughs> and I hate it because it's too intimidating for me because I can't paint them well. You've not come to terms with skin yet because it's, it's been a repeated fear. You know, have you tried to tackle it? Have you tried to tackle it or do you just hold on let me turn around uh no, no. do you know what i mean <laughs> no nah, not really no do you know what i mean it's like well it's just i just rather paint a, a a good set of armor from elder basically you know a cloak with a helmet it's tough. I, I need to, admittedly. It's just, it doesn't bring me any joy. I don't know if that's because I'm not good at it or because I just genuinely just don't like painting faces and stuff. So it's, it's quite hard to feel a drive or desire to paint something that I have no desire or drive to, to, to paint. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I so, mean, I'm the other way around. I've, 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 I'm doing a bust at the minute. I've done quite a few and I think each one I'm improving, so I'm quite enjoying but it. You enjoyed the first one, or are you enjoying it more now you're improving? I'm enjoying it more now that I'm improving, because mm. the first one... I mean, I've gone back to my first couple, and they were atrocious, uh, <laughs> to the point where I've stripped them and do them again. But they've been, necess they've been necessary steps, so I think with you, you probably need to tackle it. It's probably worth saying as well that, no doubt, when uh, David does paint these, he'll be doing videos on Miniature mm. Art Academy, uh, via the um, the website, which we'll put links on to below. So, if you want to follow along, you can follow along with those. And I think Dave, David, I know 
um, Alfonso definitely has tutorials on how mm. to paint busts. And yep. I've used a lot of those in order to equip me. And his approach mm. is the approach I use now, um, mm. painting busts. And that, that broke down a lot of the barriers for me. So I guess almost every single model I've got for Dragonhead has large amounts of skin. So if I want to paint my own models, I need to learn how to do skin. And oh, hold on. I still think it's great that it looks like he's sticking his tongue out. Um, this is skin, right? And I think, admittedly, the the like brightness is a bit too much, but I don't... Well, okay, it looks pretty bad. The, oh, fuck me. The tonality of it, I don't think is that bad. It looks a lot worse than it is. But I still didn't enjoy doing it. Hold on. Okay, and then here's the other one. Again, it doesn't show how bad it is, but it's really bad. And I think, so I was like, right, let me just try and, you know, tackle skin. And I got like, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes into painting. And I just kind of thought, what am I doing with my life? Do you know what I mean? You're kind of like, it's just, why am I wasting my time doing something? I, 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 and, and obviously, in a way, that's the wrong attitude because you will never improve unless you go I think, and, and push through. I think, yeah. I think the other thing about painting skin as well, which I found is, although it works on volumes and everything, like all other painting, the volumes aren't as intuitive um, as, let's say, painting an arm or cloth or anything mm. like that. So you almost need to exaggerate the volumes and then bring them back down again. Because what you find with a lot of people who start painting, and like I said, I'm no, no expert by any means, but a lot of people who start painting bases and busts is they don't put enough contrast in their pieces. So as a result, the piece just looks flat, no matter how much they play around with it. And sometimes what I found the key was is to putting enough contrast in the shadows and the highlights to then exaggerate the volumes and the form and then blend it in afterwards. The other thing that I was doing, which I think I've got the hang off now, is it's very easy to make skin look lifeless and pasty. Mm, um, enough and red. it's about... Yeah, it's about adding enough red and life into it. So once you balance Blues, those proportions, purples. yeah, once you balance those proportions out, it starts to 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 help. But what I certainly started off doing, and I see a lot of people doing who are starting with bus, is they don't they, they're too scared to put in the harsh shadows in the cheekbones under it's the neck. It's just hard. Bring, that that, that like, like <clears throat> that, as you said, like that volume interpretation. Is you do one line wrong and the whole thing just looks completely wrong. Even if, like, you can do wrong colours, but if the volumes are right, it will look better than if you did perfect colours with wrong volumes. Um, I think I think the other thing with busts as well, it's very difficult to study a piece and copy it because what you don't realise with busts is there's a lot of exaggerated sketching that's done and then it's refined later on. Whereas I think people try to approach busts with a very refined feel and that's why they never get that finish that they They're see elsewhere mm. and it's because they don't realize that that's been through a lot of rough work and sketching before it's then been airbrushed and and fine lined out so that shadow under the cheek must have would have started off a, a good four or five times darker before mm. it was blended out and settled in and i found that was the key so my busts in the first three or four sessions look rough as but as i start blending them out it pays off because later on down the line you keep that contrast and that um and that shape and that's the key to realizing your face so obviously looking at a face here you can't see the cheekbones that exaggerated but you almost have to contour it like makeup like women do with makeup where they contour yeah, it exaggerate. Their cheekbones yeah. and, it's, and, and exaggerate it to give that that shape so i think for me i think painting bust is very different to any other type of painting you mean faces uh, or from the bus? Faces in particular, faces in particular, but bus mm. in general. I think it's very different. I think we've had this conversation before, where we see people who can paint very well in a certain scale, mm. and they move up to busts, and it yeah. doesn't translate. Yeah. However, you it, see people move from busts to smaller scale a lot easier because yeah, I yeah. think there's a lot Absolutely. more knowledge required to paint busts. In my, I, I, I think so. The bigger you go, the more difficult it is uh, but also interestingly sometimes if you apply the same logic from a 
from a normal size to a big scale, it, it actually still translates quite well. Like if someone paints a Titan, obviously you, the, the difficulty is you've got to, it's a bit like if you have a photo and you take a photo from like, I don't know, and you zoom in and it's pixelated, right? And then trying to paint those or fill in those areas of that pixelated thing is the, the you zoom out, the laws and the, the things are still there, like the, the light placements, you know, on the top and it follows here and here and here. But then when you make it bigger, you've obviously just got to fill in the gaps between here all of a sudden, which you didn't have to do before because you were just doing the top and the nose. Yeah. The, yeah. the logic stays the same, but the amount of information you have to fill in is... No one likes information like this. It's terrible. Um, anyway, skin. I say anyway about my own comment line or not about what you've just said. Skin is... Obviously, maybe at some point in my life, I'll get on board with it. It's just like, fucking hell, it's so hard. Yeah. Well, if we, yeah. You know what? There's our first topic, isn't it? If we do a spin-off show where we just talk about our hobby and what we've done, um, we can start off with skin and bust, and I can uh, yeah. take a look at a couple I've done and can take a look at a couple of you've done. Oh, it's another bush, Jamie. And you know, if you, you, the skin, the skin colors aren't uh, your steroids, you know, it's basically all orange and yellow, and yet you absolutely know it's skin in a sunset vibe. Um, and this looks like Reuben, is it? Is that Reuben? It, it is Reuben, yes. Good eye. So, this is the latest release from Big Child Creatives, um, and it's it from their line called Songs of Songs of War Range. Now, the Songs of War Range is female-centric busts of warriors throughout history from different um, uh, kind of cultures and times. And it's the idea is to try and celebrate um, strength and female confidence um, in a very objective manner. Now, I don't want to go too much into, into this aspect. I don't want to go off onto a, a tangent, but there's always been this kind of, sometimes people think there's an over-sexualization of female subject matters in a, miniature, in a miniature painting world. And obviously what Big Child would try to do here is try to remove that and try to show that women can be strong, confident, without having to, uh, to obviously display them in, in, in such an objective manner. This is the, the latest release. And you're quite correct, it's been painted by the talented Ruben Martinez, who's obviously the head art director and painter at Big Child Creatives. And it's available to uh, order now. Um, I'm just seeing if we've got any more information here. No, that's that's all the information I've got at the moment. So that bust is available it is out now. now. It is out now, yeah. It, this is fresh news. This was announced two days ago. Um, at, at the time of recording, exactly. So I believe they've got another five busts in the range. And like I said, they're, they're from different wow. cultures um, and different periods of history. And I think what's interesting about this is they've tried to embody um, an emotion. And I think the sculpt's done it. And I think obviously Ruben's taken it and run with that. But obviously, when you see this, war isn't exactly the kind of, usually you've got a very proud, heroic warrior who takes pride in the destruction they've caused, but you can see the sorrow in this sculpt's face. You can see that war isn't a pretty thing in terms of the the way she's adored in the blood, but more so the expression. And I, I, in my view, you see remorse in her face. This Clearly she's won and um, she's been victorious, but it's come at a, uh, at a heavy cost. And Psychological quite, cost, Lionel. Exactly. And I think it's quite clever how they've captured that emotion um in the face both in the sculpt and and as well in in Ruben's uh, brushwork in order to carry that story on so I think it's a, a very nice take on a female warrior it shows a lot of depth and character um and I think it's a nice celebration um of the female form in in not such an obvious manner as we see in some other sculpts yeah, I think it's interesting that we do boobify women in the model industry. I, it kind of annoys me that there aren't just loads of guys going around with massive cocks. Um, I think that should be a lot more, you know, explored. Do you know what I mean? No comment. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a model out there with it, Jamie. You'll find it and cover it in the, uh, the hub show. There isn't. I've looked. Uh, it's weird, though, because there is a lot of 
uh, cleavage in in a lot of the sculpts that we have. And in, in computer games, it's not just our models, uh, animes mm. and stuff like that. But you never see a guy with a massive <laughs> wadge in his in his trousers, um, or like a little a little cleavage sack for his balls. Um, probably because it just it wouldn't look very good and it wouldn't sell. I think, like I said, we can we can probably cover it in a more in depth. But yeah. I, move on. I, th- I, th- move I, th- on. I don't I don't I don't think it's as black and white. The only thing I would say is I don't think it's as black and white as people say. I do think there are um, male models, so to speak, which kind of exaggerate the male form, and it doesn't have to be obviously. You're, oh yeah, if you go down, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. You're, I, you're really but obviously, if I look at uh, Black Sun miniatures. And I take my top off. I don't look like any of those. So yeah, there is obviously <laughs> there is obviously uh, the subjectification of of the male form as well. Obviously, you've got barbarians. Yeah. They're built. They've got eight packs and whatnot. I, I accept it's probably not the same as the objectification of of, of women in models. Yeah, I however, it's the, that being the said, stuff behind it as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. However, that being said, I still think it is present. To a degree, with with male uh, with 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 male sculpts, and I think that's the case of when you take it to the fantastical. Sometimes those things can be exaggerated. Now, I'm not condoning and I'm not apologising for the models that do take it too far, but I don't think it's just purely women. I think there are male examples as well. I'm not offended by, and I make it quite clear. I really like black sub miniatures. I think their models are amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not offended by anything they do, but you know I'm not trying to no, pull no, them no, in. No, but, no. I, but 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 I don't think it's as black and white where it's just one sex which is is has got the issues. There are issues it, there. With... Yeah, yeah. Is it body body? <laughs> what is it? Um, oh, fuck. There's a very specific word, but yeah, it, it. I guess it's it's happened longer for women than it has for men. And as you say, we could go into it in a different thing and. And but it also happens in media as well. If you think about you know films when guys get the top off, normally they look like a uh, you know the Rock or that other guy with the little dweeby face, but the he's got veins everywhere or or Thor or you know. Hmm. So yes, there's what's it called? There's hold on, body dysmorphia, uh, and I think it is rife within. But as you say, for me personally, it's not offensive because with a little bit of knowledge of it, you know that. The people in films work really, really hard to get it. They're not saying that that's what a man should look like. They're fulfilling a role that they're specifically playing. If whereas I guess on on the women's side, they'll say that like front covers of magazines they get. Anyway, this is totally not what models are about. But you know they do think, Photoshop think, and stuff. I, like I said, I think we can go into it. The reason I don't want to cover it in here because I think it's such a serious stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's such a serious subject matter. My concern is if we start talking about it. Yeah. And we don't explain ourselves properly enough yeah. because we don't have enough time to. Yeah, we look people like, would yeah. deduce that we've come we've come down one side or another. I yeah. think it's worth exploring. I think it's probably worth having a discussion it is an with maybe subject. Yeah, some model makers in the you know in in in, in the uh, in the modeling industry to to bring their perspective. I think it'd be a very interesting discussion to have. The only yeah. reason I'm trying to cart with research it here, as well. Yeah, yeah. The reason I'm trying to cart it here is I don't want to say something and people believe we're off a view. As you yeah. said, it's too big a subject to cover. It is, there. it is. And, so and, things. and also, I'd like to think when we do a discussion on it, we wouldn't argue one side either. Um, quite often when I when I have discussions about things, normally I, I try and devil's advocate, but I, I try and think of it from both sides. And yeah. one, what you know, if you took that segment out and quoted it, that would be highly offensive and it would be on the same. But the point is, when we have a discussion... We, we, you know, we're not saying one is right or the other's right. Obviously, I do have my beliefs on it, but you should still try and explore both. So yeah, well, it's that, I, I it's that classic. I, I believe that classic thing is you you vote with your wallet. If you don't like it, don't mm. purchase it, don't support it, and that will speak. Um, if it's making yeah, yeah, if it's making sales. However, like I said, uh, Big Child is very as, as approached this female bust from a very different perspective. I think it's very classically done. Um, I think it's quite a moving piece. I think it's been complemented by the brushwork of Ruben, um, and I think if you have the skill to the skill to to uh, do it justice, it's worth adding to your collection. And <clears throat> it's a hard one to follow, but it's unique as well. Again, in a very moving, nice way. Uh, you don't see many um, emotional pieces. I don't think war doesn't really sell emotions very well. You know. 
uh, if you want the big barbarian, it will be weird that he's crying. Um, normally you want an angry barbarian or a prideful. So, well, I guess, anyway, let's not go down that. I got, so I, I, I don't even know where we are. Lionel and I had a good, uh, we, we, yeah, it's good. And I, well, that made it sound wrong. Like a good chin wag. No, but I meant that we, <laughs> what the fuck am I saying? Basically, we're looking forward to doing a show uh, where we can cover that topic properly rather than, yeah, bashing out in 10 minutes and uh, not explaining basically our positions properly. Um, yeah. I'm being misunderstood. Let's roll it. Okay, so this is the next piece of news, and I thought it was quite interesting uh, in the current climate. So the picture there is of Ash, and Ash is a release from Ignis Arts. Now, we've covered Ignis Arts on a number um, of shows before because they keep releasing some really nice busts. Um, they tend to do a lot of uh, Slavian uh, folklore busts, which we've covered in the past. Um, and what they're doing this time is they're part of a project whereby if you buy the Ash Bust, which I believe is 20 euros, they're actually doing an online painting forum. Now, they have made it quite clear that this isn't an online class. They're not, you're not going to be taught by these individuals. However, they're going to be present as mentors. So um, there are two dates there. If you buy the Ash Bust and um, apply for it, they will send you the details and it's a Zoom call and effectively it's a group paint along um, from, around the, from around the world for anybody who paints, who, who purchases that bus. And that's, from what I understand, that's your only ticket to entry. You don't have to buy a ticket on top of that. It's merely um, the bus, which I believe is about 20 euros anyway. So cool you're not having yeah. to pay anything additional. Um, and you get to get some group painting, you get to be a part of the community, but also you get access to the minds of two very, very good painters who are pictured there below. So you've got Michael Pasarski and you've got Christoph as well. Now, the reasons these two have been picked, it's it's no accident. Michael has done a lot of box arts for, uh, box arts for Ignis Art, um, and he's done a lot of the uh, Slavian um, mythology ones and Christoph as well has already uh, started doing some box arts as well I've sent pictures of of what they have done so there should be a pixie there a green pixie there you go yep okay so that's uh, Christoph's piece he did that which was a release for Ignis Art and that came out a couple of weeks ago and it's a beautiful piece so he did the official box art for that release so that explains why Ignis Art have selected him as one of the mentors for this online painting course. I think you might have covered this in your Humber show, did you? Or have I made that up? Something similar. I like him as a painter very much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this is, I mean, this is a beautifully uh, painted piece with complementary greens and purples. It's, it's a really nice piece. And then there is another piece um, that I forwarded to you, this piece as well. So, that's a, a release. I've got the name here. Um, give me one second. Okay. Wal Wazalka. And that's a bust from one of their fantasy pieces. And you'll allude to the bottom there that you'll see that it's a mermaid, as you can see from the scales. Or I've, dedu or I've deduced it's a mermaid. It's it's been it's been painted I mean, in that it, fashion. It, yeah, it kind of looks like one. Although the only I guess the only thing is she's not naked, but I mean, who the hell else has fish scales on their, like, exactly. waist? Yeah. And, and once again, you know, it, it's difficult to talk about Lance paint work because it's just flawless again, and he can, play, he can paint female skin fantastically. The only point I noted here, though, is I don't know whether it's the sculpt or whether the way he's interpreted it, but it looks like Angelina Jolie to me. I don't mm -hmm. know what you think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... I don't, I don't I don't know how much of that is the sculpt and how much yeah. of that is Lan's brushwork, um, but the two have come together. Um and it isn't you actually the more I stare at it now on the bigger screen, it is a, it is an amazing piece. I find it Lan Lan is still one of the very few artists. I can look at a lot of artists and go, I understand how they've done that, even mm. though I can't replicate it, I can understand it. I just don't understand his process. It's like witchcraft. I think um, looking at it, it has to be a, a combination of airbrush with, yeah, basically stippling um, or blending. But it's so, 
his work it's, is so photorealistic to, to me anyway. I know people I'd love to say, see this in person. Um to to, mm. to 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 see but yeah the the face like the the colors on the face he, he if he uses airbrush he must just be a flipping god with an airbrush and if he doesn't use an airbrush he must be a bloody god with a brush or he's both double god. yeah i've seen i've seen one of his pieces in hand obviously i went to one of his painting classes mm. by a journeyman um in london uh when he did his non-metallic non metal class yeah, I remember. Yeah. he was working on a vamp vampire piece and i saw him painting that and he yeah. it was it was mad you know how you see a lot of artists with the sketch phase and the refinement phase he did use he the airbrush to... didn't he i don't on the, not on, on that, the not, on the on the green not, on the wings not on the maybe skin. later on but maybe later on but the piece he was working on in the class it was pretty much refined by brush straight off <laughs> he's got a very he's got a very unique approach and when you held it in your hands it was like a shrunken head i mean there are, the detail is all there the detail is yeah. all there in real life you know how sometimes you can get better views by the way it's been photographed mm. by placing on a back black ground like he has done now by camera trickery seeing that piece in re in real life blew my mind even more he's got he's got a very unusual unique approach to the point where it was like it was all refined as he went along mm. and did it. There was no rough work. Um, Trying to replicate you know, that in that like, class was, yeah, it was hard. Oh yeah, yeah, that wasn't the example piece. That was actually a piece of box art he was doing in his downtime oh, really? in between teaching. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was. Yeah. yeah, it was a it was a release that was up and coming, and I think he said, "I've got to get this done in two days." So I've got two days left to get this finished. Yeah. So he was doing it in between in between the class. Um, yeah, but he, he he's, a, he's an amazing talent, and so you got access to these two guys as part of as part of that. If you go um, go back to the former picture then with the class, so that's the bus there. So Ash uh, is what you have to pick up. They're the two dates. Mm -hmm. So nineteenth of June, twenty sixth of June. You've got some time um, before it's due. So if you're interested in having a paint along, having access, because although they won't be showing you a step by step as in a traditional painting class they will be there on hand painting along for you yeah to and it's on zoom so you can ask to... questions out loud which is it was just exactly. which is you know it's a lot easier than um, text isn't it yeah it's a it's, it's a really interesting um project yeah, actually concept. because obviously yeah, it's, yeah, been agree. Done, yeah. it's been done in the current climate for obvious reasons that we don't need to go into but also i think what's happened as a result of what we're going through is people are finding different ways of working and it's one of those things that you look at you think actually why haven't we done this beforehand mm. i mean mm. obviously it's nice to meet up in person it's obviously nice to have that camaraderie and be in the same room but equally yeah. when you've got people in the us people in the europe people in and uh, you know further afield it's the best i mean you've still got time zones to juggle yeah, with, but global, it's the best way yeah, to yeah. Get it doesn't matter um, i agree it doesn't and say also... how long no go ahead sorry <laughs> um look, uh also you, you whenever i've done those courses actually it's really hard to see them paint you have to stand around them whereas in this setup hopefully if they're painting obviously they'll actually have everything proper and then you can ask them in person obviously the downside is they can't see your models as easily um yeah but i'm not even sure that obviously there is advantages but i, I basically i think it gives you advantages that you couldn't get in a in a in a course you know, in person. Well, I suppose I suppose it's that middle ground between an in-person course and a patron, yeah. whereby you can see yeah. it, but you can't ask him any questions. So it's kind of a middle yeah. ground yeah, yeah. between the two. Um, very nice. So it's interesting. And yeah. I've got to say, I think it's a very good deal in the sense that you only have to buy the bust. Yeah. Which you might want to do anyway. Anything, which you might yeah. want to do anyway. Uh, they, they're not, they don't appear to be charging any kind of premium on top to be a part of it. So... Yeah. It's it, it's a really nice initiative, and if you want to be a part of it, if you want to support it, um, and like I said, Ig Ignis are, in my view, produce some really amazing uh, busts, mm. um, and once again, produce for me some of the best female busts. Um, they had the whole range, didn't at they? The yeah. at, the, at the whole range, and I think it's worth. I, I don't know if it's um, worth mentioning, but I'm going to say it anyway. I believe the owner is 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 a 
is a woman and therefore I think that art direction and that slant brings a, a mm. slightly more interesting nice. focused um, yeah. um, slant to it and I think that's why you'll find that in my view their busts and their models are a bit classier than maybe other companies that might have approached the same subject matter yeah. so once again in my view all of the female sculpts from Ignis are, are all very strong confident women um, and display it in such a way that they don't need to be objectified so it seems to be a reoccurring theme in this episode I don't know why um, so once again if you want some 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 great female um, um, models to paint then think about Ignis art and think about supporting that initiative which I think is quite interesting I agree um, I do sorry I thought of some jokes uh, so thought we'd throw these in a little bit of a curveball there for you Lionel yeah. obviously this mm -hmm. this was not planned from Lionel but yeah I just thought a quick shout out I've got not two more basically um Spirit Balls models um this is their next release uh and I believe is it this weekend or is it next weekend doesn't matter unless you know Lionel I off the top of your head I believe it's next week so I did look at it because um I double checked the date because I want to order a copy um just in case it was this week, uh, this uh, weekend, but it's advance notice for it going live next week. And I think it's going live yeah. potentially Thursday Friday. or Friday. Yeah. Uh, but it's worth keeping that. And it's worth saying that the, um, although that's the company's name, the sculpture is obviously Lucas Pina. Lucas Pina. Yes. Um, and seeing it up close, it's got his distinct style. And it's a very, very, very nice style. So, you so desire almost, you can he's almost like now that i've seen more of his sculpts and I, i'm starting to appreciate it he's almost a bit he's got that signature style like uh, like disney or or um, mm. um i've been looking a lot more into manga and anime as well so studio ghibli has got when you see a studio ghibli film you know it's there no he's got a signature he's got a signature style that no matter what he's sculpting yeah. You look at it straight away and think, oh, that's that's one of his. That's one of it's his. It's just so um, damn smooth in a weird, yeah. good way. It's ridiculous. I don't know. It's but ridiculous, to be honest. The volume is perfect. But also the, fe the features as well. There's an almost mm. semi realistic cartoon yeah. exaggerated it's, feel it's about it. It's like the old it. school it, Disney, isn't it? Like the Cinderella, Peter Pan, mm. Snow White. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but I didn't want to drag these out. But yeah, that, that's on sale soon. And. Our boys, uh, Journeyman, have also this new case of the fugitive. Yeah. Um, he's very angry and he's jumping on rocks. So, uh, yeah, just buy, buy it if you like it. Avoid it if you're scared of him. Um, I think it's worth probably worth mentioning. It's I'm guessing massive. Uh, it's pretty educated guess, and it's uh, it's based on Paul Bonner's art again. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 Mr. Yeah. Paul and Mr. Bonner are the same person. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's from a, actually a bigger artwork of wolves with anger issues. Um, yeah. So I thought I'd just give a shout out, let everybody know that that's, I, I think it's out now or it's up for pre-order now. Uh, Journeyman Miniatures. Worth it. Yeah. Job done. Yeah, they've, they've cornered the book. I thought oh, we had Dominion. Back? Whoops the yeah. Daisy. AOS website. So we are done with the miniatures, of course. And now we have a website to go to. Sounded a lot like a baptism, uh, yeah. the way I said that. Hold on. We're in. Um, so this is um, a thing called Dominion by Warhammer uh, Games Workshop, I suppose. And basically um what they did is they unboxed dominion and dominion is the ultimate introduction to the new edition of age of sigma uh and the box actually has it all it's amazing uh the armies are astonishing okay the rich fiction introduced a new era to the mortal realms which if you didn't know it's brilliant and uh ex they're expertly refined rule set so this isn't just your average rule set guys it's expertly refined i don't know who's <laughs> saying that but it's definitely true. Um, and it supports epic battles on the tabletop. And they've that's it. That's it. Lionel, you take over. Okay, so what they synopsis. previewed 
Yeah, so what they previewed earlier this week was Dominion. So Dominion is the latest addition for Age of Sigma. So Age of Sigma is getting a new release, a new rule set, and a new uh, reboot. And what they've done is obviously they've put the new rules in the hardback rule book in the new box set. I thought it was worth covering because I know obviously we don't cover Games Workshop that much. Um, but for me, I think this is a very interesting release and I'll go into it um, as we go down the screen. Um, but essentially, AOS has taken over, in my view, as being one of the most interesting game uh, that Games Workshop uh, produce. And not from a rule set point of view, because to make it quite clear, I don't game anymore, so I don't know what the rules are like. But from a miniature perspective, I think... You blocked my face out. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know that would happen. <laughs> um, oh, shit. From a miniature perspective, I think all the imagination and all the creativity is in AOS at the moment. Um, some of the releases that are coming out, some of the sculpts that are coming out um, are really good, really interesting. And I know we've had some Marmite releases in terms of the High Elves where they were heavily used with Elves and whatnot. However, I do applaud them for taking risks and doing something different. And I don't believe, in my view, I don't believe that creativity exists in Warhammer 40K. Warhammer 40K seems to be producing the same old stuff over and over again. And I is, think this is another... Go is ahead, is that because, was Age of Sigma not selling well? No, a Age of Sigma, obviously you had the old Warhammer fantasy and they rebooted that world, which annoyed lot of people yeah. but then age of sigma Obviously. when it came back a lot of people started to enjoy the rule set better but also enjoyed the models better and it's now become i think it was definitely more popular at one stage than 40k was um i don't know what it still is yeah. Um, and it's 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 grown it's grown more popular and obviously this is the the latest incarnation and if we scroll down and start looking at some of the models I'm you'll still see just just, just sorry to, i'm just still so confused as to how they're able to die when they're in the more like the immortal realm why, why they're fighting each other why don't they just not obviously you need a setting to, to you know I mean, it's a stupid thing for me to say because obviously it's a game so they'll write whatever they said but um i'm just having a good old bitch here carry on <laughs> carry on so um i think what's interesting here is for me it's it's a fairly standard release, and there are some new Stormcast internals in there. And to put it bluntly, there are slimline versions. So obviously, the old Stormcast Stormcast internals were quite hefty uh, in stature. Reads, however, they? In yeah, however, they've gone for a more streamlined approach. So that's the, that's the boring stuff out of the way. What has really caught my attention though mm. in this set is one, the two HQ models that have been released. These two, um, which so if you go to the top um the the winged one that one right when i saw this in an advanced preview i automatically assumed that it was going to be a standalone release i never expected this to come inside a starter box mm. now if we compare starter boxes in terms of how they progressed back in the day this would have been in my view an independent release retailing at retailing about 40 pound the fact that you're getting this inside the starter box is i think quite a leap in quality yeah, and um, in terms of yeah. yeah, in terms of one of the size of the model, and two the amount of effort they've put into a character model in the starter set. The other point, which is worth noting, which you'll see when you scroll down, is we've got very different looking orcs. So or orcs, or orcs. Right? Yeah. yeah, or orax as they're called. So <laughs> these are called cruel cruel boys, um, and they are a uh, different. Oruk Warband, which has been introduced into the Mortal Realms. However, what's very interesting is Games Workshop, be it 40k or fantasy, always had a signature orc, and you knew it was a Games Workshop orc as soon as you saw it. If you scroll through these, these look like very different orcs. Which is good. Is crap? No, no, it'll be, it'll be back. Just give it a sec. There you go. Okay. What happened? <laughs> Um, um yeah which is good like I, th I think i think coming up with unique orcs is 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 worthwhile basically yeah i think it's i think it's interesting though for them to change the silhouette so so drastically 
when they haven't mm. done it in years. It's a very, I think it's quite a big departure from the from the GW Orc. It looks yeah, a lot. I don't agree. It looks a lot like the, I suppose, a cross between the Lord of the Rings Orcs, and and Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Orcs. I, I, in a weird way, I'd say this guy is a lot darker, and that's probably where the Lord of the Rings come in. They're not in any way comical. Um, no. No, exactly. They're not trying to have a good time and just, I don't know, it doesn't look like they're fighting for the sake of fighting, for the fun of fighting. They look like they just want to kill people. Mm. Um, which, yeah, I agree. Well, it's it's brave. Well, Orcs are always the kind of comic relief and they're quite darker, but I always find it very interesting when GW changed their silhouette um, mm. because that's what they pride themselves on. Um, it must mean that it's not performing for... T t t Otherwise, why would you have such like Space Marines? They keep pumping Space Marines because Space Marines are doing so well, and they have done for the last. I don't. Do you know I what I mean? Then, I, if you're making me, a this is, boatload of money. For me, for me though, this is why AOS seems to be more interesting because they're taking risks, and I, I keep going back to the the new High Elves. Whether you like them or you hate them, you've got to appreciate them for the kind of stance they've taken. Where it would have been very easy to play it safe. And make them blue elves, but they haven't. They've, you know, they've really given them some character, some culture. They're doing the same now with orcs. It would be nice if they took these kind of risks with 40k IP. Um, because I, I, think, I do, I, I do agree I with you. Because it's, yeah, it stagnates for me. It stagnated massively uh, 40k because it's this basically it's a space marine release as fast as humanly possible all the time every day. And obviously they're doing their spin-off games, special games, which is good. But yeah, I agree. But also, it to me, they're only taking risks because they have to. It it doesn't make sense otherwise. Why would you? Why would you take a risk on a product that's doing really, really well? Obviously, well, we don't know that, the... and that's probably libelous. <laughs> but now, I, I I wonder whether the other issue is is always been forty k and fantasy has just been. Orcs with guns and orcs with swords and humans with guns and humans with bows and arrows and Eldar with bows and arrows. I wonder whether they're deliberately changing it so that there isn't that transition between um, this is just fantasy in the future or this is just 40k in the past because now the races are looking very different between the two right, worlds. Yes. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is true. And in a way, yeah, I completely agree. Like, I mean, yeah. For I, I base personally, I don't like them, but you know that's got a lot to do with my stance, as you know, on Games Workshop in the last fifteen years. Uh, but I completely agree that I, it, like, even if it is forced upon them, it doesn't mean that you have to have to do it or go this way. So it is commendable. And it is, in a way, refreshing to see something else. But for me, it's so different from everything I loved about Orcs, uh, which was, you know, 1992 Orcs, and that's O-R-C-S, not the Orcs 40Ks. I never mm. really liked Orcs in 40K, but I love them in... Uh, but I, And I think that goes more to do with, like, I guess, historically, like, Orcs are or have always been comic humour. Unless you're in World of Warcraft, um, I I I really like that one as well. That centerpiece, that um, it's a massive model as well. Yeah, yeah, that warlord. I mean, I think once again, you've got to look at like with like. You've got to compare Games Workshop with where they were before. You look at the detail on that sculpt, and you look at the character in that sculpt, and yeah, you look lot, obviously. The, yeah. I mean, heavy metal have always been quality paint jobs, so that's by the by. But you look at the the posture. You look at everything. That is a huge advancement from what you would have seen from Games Workshop, in my view, to all, you know five or six years ago. And remember, the, and remember, these are gaming models. You know, mm. these are mod, these are gaming pieces. I think sometimes it's easy to forget that when you look at these off the back of other seventy-five mil sculpts of maybe a barbarian on the line. What's, actually, it, it is. It's a really good point and intriguing as well because this is thirty-two, uh, thirty-two miniature scale is yeah yeah uh like i'm really interested to see do people want that much detail you know like 
the vast majority of gamers can't paint. Um, and obviously that's a massive generalization, but I still think it's true. If you really love the game, normally people, at least growing up, people weren't good painters. They just, I mean, like at my local games workshop, the amount of armies that were just gray. Hold on. He's coming back. He's still here. <laughs> Is it dead? I think so. Uh, well, we can we can carry on without you, Lionel. We don't need a face. I like that it right. says EO, EOS. Right, I'll pause it, guys. Sorry. So, yeah. Um, I'm just a disembodied I, I, voice. Now. <laughs> yeah, let me hide it. It's off putting. Um, <laughs> like, it's a really hard one for me. I, I, I can. The thing is, my stance is like, I like the old stuff. But that isn't like having that stance as a company is never a viable thing. You know, have models from 992 is like, well, okay, we we won't be able to sell any more models and we can't improve, we can't innovate, we can't. So, you know, I absolutely get why Games Workshop go new routes and try new things. And, and it's cool on that respect that they're trying completely new style models. It's very World of Warcraft for me. Um, yeah. which might be, you know, it, it, it might make more sense because that's where the market is. Um, mm. But I, I, I will always like metal old school models. Uh, yeah, and like you said, there'll always be a market for that. But you know my stance on Old Hammer. I hate Old Hammer because it looks old shit. and outdated. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah, I think as a company... It? As a company, you've got to keep moving forward. I, I, for me, this was very interesting because, like I keep saying, I keep labouring the point, for GW to depart from a silhouette that they've used for so long. Um, and make yeah, it shows that they could that, make big decisions, doesn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and... it's, 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 for me, this is big news. It's, for me, like you said, we've seen the same old orcs, edition after edition. They've been refined slightly, but they've always been the orcs, the GW orcs that you know. Um, for me... This is a huge departure, and I think it's very interesting. And I think the risks they are taking with AOS is making that miniature range and line far more interesting mm. as a, mm. a from a painter's perspective. Yeah. Um, well, than the, the 40k one is. The thing is, look at what they did with 40k and updating the models for, um, like, uh, what's it called? The new. Space Marines, the a star, a Startes. Oh. Is that what they call what they called the new guys, the big ones? Yeah, Startes, Primaris, Primaris. Like that, they you know they basically didn't change them at all. They made them slightly taller and put a red helmet on them. Um, hmm. And and in my opinion, that's not innovation. But they validated an entire army uh, that people had had for the last twenty four years. So from a business point of view, it makes perfect sense. Hmm. Whereas this is slightly different. This is more seems like they just want a different feeling for orcs mm. because the age of similar armies hadn't been out that long so it's not anyway let's uh if you're okay with that lionel let's call it there yeah i think i think the camera switching off of me is is oh, is the what is the universe's way of saying is the universe's way of saying yeah we're done we're done yeah that's more interesting than that crappy view um yeah i agree Cheeky, uh, a cheeky hour and twenty minutes, maybe. It's good to be back. Just say, yeah. Uh, I suppose, it should, yeah, yeah, it has been good to be back, actually. And it's worth just giving a shout out as well to uh, Miniature Art Academy. If you want to up your painting yeah. ability, then Miniature Art Academy is the way to do it. Um, we support them, and there is a link below. And once again, if you want to get yourself on some nice brushes in order to assist you in that. Broken Toad is a way to go. Broken Toad are our official sponsors. Um, and we will put a link in the video below uh, so that you can go over to their web store and pick up. They do a variety of things. They do busts. They're doing a lot more materials. However, um, the the biggest seller for them and the one thing that a lot of people know them for is, is their brushes. So head over on the link, mm -hmm. give them some support um, and and treat yourself to, to something new. I actually do need some brushes, so I genuinely might go and buy some. Um, and they also do casts. So, thank you, Lionel. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. And thank you, viewers. And we'll see you. As see always. the viewers in two weeks' time. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two sweet, sweet weeks. 
to build up some hunger for us. Right. I, 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 yeah, I've learned now, Lionel, that at the end of videos, I just, it's my opportunity to talk completely nonsensical, non-related. So I won't do it. Thank you guys. Like, and genuinely, we love the comments. It's basically the only reason why we do this show. Um, so the more comments, the better, please. We, do, we really, we do I should say that in the show. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. In fact, we often, we fire up the chat afterwards when we do get some comments back. And it's, it is really nice to see that engagement because one, we're surprised anybody does watch us. Um, so it's always nice that there's evidence that somebody has watched and commented. And thank, <laughs> and, and, and thank you. And thank you to those repeat commenters. We do notice the names. There are people who comment week in, week out. So thank you for your support and thank you for commenting and, and helping us out. It's, it is appreciated. <laughs> Absolutely. It really is. So good evening. If you're watching it at night, <laughs> see you later, guys. Yeah, take care.